Hello Booktube! For Tag Thursday, I'm going to be doing the Contradictions book tag. This tag was created by Daniela of if of only if for a page and I'll leave a link to her original video down below. Let's get the questions set up. Uh, question number one. I love this genre, but I didn't like this book. Uh, my favorite genre of fiction is science fiction and fantasy. I've loved science fiction and fantasy since I was a child. Uh, but that does not mean I love every work of science fiction and fantasy. If you've watched my channel for any length of time you will know I don't like a whole lot of stuff. But anyway, for this, to answer this question, uh, the science fiction or fantasy novel I didn't like is uh, Crossroads of Canopy by Thoriah Dyer. Uh, it is the first book in at least a duology. I'm thinking it's probably a trilogy, but I haven't really followed it because I really didn't like it. Um, I read it in 2017, shortly after it came out, and it's about a young woman who uh, becomes sort of the gardener of a temple who aspires to become the bodyguard the bodyguard of the next incarnation of this particular deity in this setting um, there are uh, three levels of the world it's basically a gigantic super forest um, the upper layer is called the canopy where the story initially is set and then there are two further layers um, and this world is sort of ruled by um, a number of um, incarnated gods who incarnate and then die and reincarnate um, and so the protagonist aspires to become the bardic god for a new incarnation of this of the goddess she serves um, but she ends up making a mistake that costs her everything and in, and she refuses to, to accept this so she goes on a quest to um, gain power to find the incarnation and all of that stuff um, I really didn't like the book um, I liked the book initially um, the first few chapters I thought were really good but the actual start of the story this turn that kind of drives everything else I just I never quite saw how her actions that led up to this event were quite in character for her for somebody as ambitious as single-minded as she was why she would begin to act in this way and the story sort of for me at least collapsed from there um, which is something that often does happen with a lot of um, fantasy it also happened with Amberlow by uh, Laura Elena Don Donnelly and I quite like the first part of it and then there's this event this sort of turn that just completely like Tink the story for me. So, yeah. So, I guess I'll put both of them in this one. So, Crossroads of Canopy and um, Amberlow. Uh, prompt number two. I rarely read this genre, but I loved this book. So, for this prompt, I'm going to go with memoir. It is a genre that I really don't read a whole lot of. And and up until really last year's book two prize I hadn't really read memoir at all and I read one of the first books I read for last year's book two prize was the yellow house by Sarah Ann Broom and absolutely loved it it is basically her the story of the house she grew up in and of her family and it is despite a few issues um, the Rwanda section I thought probably could have been its own book or eventually become its own book 
But for the most part, I really loved um, the Yellow House and I'm looking forward to anything else Sarah and Broom writes. Uh, prompt number, or question number three. I love this trope, but I didn't like this book. So I'm quite fond of physical gods. Um, again, I do love science fiction and fantasy, so physical gods showing up is quite the thing. But I didn't like um, how it was handled in The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms by N.K. Jemisin. In this setting, uh, the gods have been largely enslaved by at least one, if not two or three of their fellows in favor of this sort of universal mortal royal family. And I just didn't care for it. Um, and of course, I one of those novels that I really sort of made me a bit leery of N.K. Jemisin because up until her most recent novel, I really haven't gotten into any of her uh, work, particularly like the first volumes in her trilogy or duology, because uh, she started off with a trilogy called the Inheritance Trilogy and then uh, the Dreambud Duology and then the uh, Broken Earth Trilogy. So I've had some issues, struggles with her. Um, I'm much fonder of the gods being a bit more active or whatnot. But anyway, question number four. I hate this trope, but I love this book. Um, so I don't really like the idiot hero. Um, I just, I don't really, I think to a certain extent, I understand why the he idiot hero is rather popular in that, that kind of character provides a certain sort of introduction to the world, a certain sort of comfort in a way that uh, you're not trying to struggle to catch up with the hero or you learn things alongside the hero. But at the same time, how often does the idiot hero really sort of stick around? I mean, like say, um, The Legend of the Condor Heroes by Jin Yong, uh, Guo Jing starts off in the series as rather slow. I mean, he struggles to learn. Um, I mean, uh, particularly martial arts, which is the focus of the story. Like, he struggles to learn uh, the basics of martial arts as taught to him by the Seven Freaks of the South. And... While he is still kind of considered to be rather slow, he does eventually, within a short period of time, uh, learn and incorporates the teachings of a number of masters of the martial arts. And his skills kind of balloon to a level where he's nearly not quite the equal of the five greats, but he's close enough to compete with them. Um, so it's sort of, yeah, I mean, so that kind of annoys me. I mean, it's also sort of the case of it's like Naruto, where he starts off as being the idiot hero, and that's probably inspired by Dragon Ball Z, and also contrasting him with uh, Sasuke, who's sort of more of a conventionally smart character, I guess, but then it really doesn't stick around, and how exactly does he learn this super technique in just a few hours? It's, yeah, I just really don't like the idiot hero uh, character. Um, but anyway, moving on to, uh, or the trope, anyway. Hitting on to question number five. I love this author, but I didn't like this book. So this one's a bit tough because I mean I like a lot of authors but I don't necessarily love all of their work um, uh, an example or example could be I mean I love Catherine Valenti but I'm not necessarily fond of um, space opera or the refrigerator monologues 
um, China Meevil. I love the Boss Log series. Excuse me, but I didn't particularly care for City in the City or Embassy Town or anything like that. So I'm, yeah, I mean, it's not, I'm not terribly consistent all the time. So I'm probably going to go with um, The City in the City by China Meevil so that I'm not listing like a hundred books in the uh, show notes. I'm going to try to keep this a little bit uh, within reason. So I'll go with um, City in the City by China Meevil. Uh, the City in the City is a crime novel set in this weird dual city-state called Ulkoma and I think it's Brussel or something. It's basically it's like two city-states merged together but completely separate and the citizens of both cities do not see each other like perceptually they kind of refuse to see each other and it's a whole kind of complicated thing and one day a tourist is murdered and a police detective from one city has to figure out what happened how it was done and the case kind of threatens the entire fabric of both cities and to be perfectly honest I don't think China Meevil can write crime fiction at all <laughs> even though it won, won a number of awards I just I don't think China Meevil really can write uh, crime fiction so uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. I so question number six I previously disliked a book by this author, but I loved this book. Um, so for this one, I'm going to go with uh, The Harder They Come, or uh, T.C. Boyle. Um, I've tried T.C. Boyle's work twice. Uh, I think it was Water Music and The Road to Wellville. Uh, Water Music is a historical, well, both of them are historical novels. One is set in the early 18th century and I didn't really get on with it at all and then The Road to Wellville is about uh, the 19th century and the 19th century health movement and I didn't get on with that one either. And then in 2017 I picked up um, The Harder They Come and it's a contemporary novel a bit more of a thriller. It's about a retired high school principal uh, dealing with um, retirement, with the plight of the world, with his son who has a number of issues, and with um, a substitute teacher who has kind of gone off the political deep end who comes into contact with her ex-employer's uh, son. And it's just a really powerful, moving book. And I am quite surprised that I like it as much as I do, given my past struggles and subsequent struggles with uh, T.C. Boyle. But maybe I should give T.C. Boyle another go. Um, prompt number seven. I love this cover, but I didn't like this book. Um, let me see here. This one, I completely kind of forgot about this tag. Uh, because I had the next one pretty much on pat, but this one here. So a cover that I like, but I don't like the book. Which I actually have quite a few, um, examples. Yeah. <laughs> um, hmm. Let me around real quick. Oh, that's a wonderful. Okay, yeah, got it. Um, Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. The cover is wonderful. Unfortunately, the novel itself is a bit overly long and not terribly good, in my opinion. I really did not get on with it. It's um, 
about a queen and a young woman from another country. It's pretty much a globe spanning book. Uh, coming to a number of people coming together to fight um, what's left of um, a dark horde, a evil overlord, and it just never worked for me. I've tried, I've read it twice. I might have bailed the first time and then finally got to it the second time and really didn't like it. Uh, so. Uh, question number eight. I don't like this cover, but I loved this book. Um, that one is on world building by uh, Timothy Hickson. Uh, Timothy Hickson is on YouTube. He is uh, Hello Future Me, where he talks about uh, world building, and he, a number of his videos are under the on world building. Uh, heading and he basically talks about various aspects of world building for science fiction and fantasy writers um, he kind of breaks down the subject and draws um, examples from more popular uh, media largely like say Harry Potter Song of Ice and Fire um, Avatar of the Last Airbender which Timothy Hickson is a huge fan of and so on and so forth. Um, I quite enjoy his videos. I quite enjoyed um, his book, the overly uh, attention paid to Brandon Sanderson, not ex withstanding, because I think he gets a little like Sanderson's approach to magic bugs me. But anyway, but I really hate the cover. It is just. <sighs> It's basically two separate images. One of a wizard oh, walking away f like, from a castle in bound in snow. And then another one is a room with a quill and parchment. And it just... Let me actually... <clears throat> See? It just... No, this cover just doesn't work at all. If it had been just this or just this, maybe. But together, it's just ugly. And really, both images, I don't think, are particularly that good either. So, yeah. So, yeah, that is a book that I love. With a horrible cover um, and for the final tag uh, prompt or question uh, tagging people I think this has already made the rounds a bit and this is one of the tags that I've been meaning to do that I actually thought I did uh, but discovered I hadn't so I don't know who's all done it and who hasn't but if you haven't done this tag and would love to do this tag uh, consider yourselves tagged and I will see you tomorrow with maybe another tag video because I do want to do the backlist tag too. And of course, a weekly reads um, tomorrow evening where I will talk about the incredibly weird reading week I've had. It's this week has been weird. So, anyway, Booktube, I will um, see you tomorrow uh, at some point. So, until then, thank you. Have a great afternoon and stay safe.